We start with the pattern, lightly dusted with parting compound. <clears throat> Place the drag over it. That's my riddle. That's a uh, eight sieve mesh. <clears throat> you can go a little thinner, but eight works pretty good for most things. Fill it about half full of sand. This is well used Petra Bond. Force that through your riddle. I wear a glove when I'm riddling because sometimes the metal pieces cut your hand and that makes for a rough day. You're just a lot better off to wear just one glove. Pull this off. And add a little more sand. <clears throat> That's a 12 by 12, three and a half inch deep. Start ramming. You start with the peen end, that's the smaller end of your rammer. Since this is mostly flat, you can go pretty uh, hard with it. If your pattern is deep, you have to be careful you don't hit the pattern. You'll notice in what's to your lower left corner, that's where the splash well is, and I'm careful there because that's an inch and a half deep. So if I hit it, I could dent it. And go ahead and add sand until you're good and full. You can go a little high with this. Back to your rammer using the peen. It takes some time and some skill to get how hard to ram. There's technique to it. No way to really teach it. You just kind of have to practice at it. You notice I added a little bit of sand before I went ahead and uh, used the butt end to flat off. That's because there were some spots I knew would be low if I didn't. There you go. I had that low corner. Corners are always hard. They're going to be soft. That's my strike. It's a piece of aluminum angle iron. What I'm doing here is just making sure there's no loose sand by packing it in. Don't want to hit very hard. Just enough to get the loose sand off. You could also blow it off. But I don't like blowing any more than I have to because you lose sand. Padding, you save all the sand. <clears throat> it's flipped over. I rammed that on the bottom board so it'll stay exactly where it's at. Gently wrap it. That's a, a piece of inch and a half dowel, probably an old brew handle. And here I am pulling the pattern. You can see I got a very clean pull. One of the things you notice when you lay out your pattern, you always put your splash well away from you. That way when you flip it, you end up with the splash well facing you. Here you can see me gently blowing out the air. This is a very inexpensive Harbor Freight pin blower. The nice thing about it is you can adjust the airflow to exactly how you want it. You don't want to just use a blow gun because you get too much air and you'll blast sand that you need out of your pattern. All right, I set the drag behind so I can make the uh, cope. Got to brush off that bomb ramming board. Whatever finishes on your ramming board is going to be the finish of the back of your plaques. Mine are actually stamped with my touch mark, so any plaque I sell to you will have H21 on the back of it. And basically, you repeat the process for the uh, drag and the cope. And we are riddling sand. There's that glove again. You don't have to put very much sand through the riddle for the cope because the cope is just the flat of the back of a plaque. Couple shovels of sand. That rammer. I put a little more sand, so you see I had to get a little more aggressive with the ramming to get the hardness I want. Professional foundries actually have tools to where you can test how hard you ram the sand.
Back to the rammer for the last time. Pack this down nice and even. And a little too much sand. I lose it. Go to the butt to flatten out the, uh, what will be the top of the uh, cope. Back to the strike. You notice I don't try and shove through all that sand in one go. If you do, you'll slide the uh, cope and then you'll lose everything on the bottom board. What you can't see is I'm going off screen to the drag and I'm measuring to where the sprue goes and then marking it with my sprue cutter. When you push the sprue cutter in, you push it straight down, don't twist. I like to leave mine in place while I dig out the pouring well because if you don't, you pack the uh, sprue with sand, sometimes it's hard to get out. This way I know that sprue will be clean. I just have to touch up the pouring basin just a little, widen it out, get it to how I like it. Break out the parting bag. This is just a uh, linen small parts bag filled with parting compound. That's an artist camel hair brush that breaks up the loose sand. I always mark mine so I know what they are, so I know what order to lay them down since I normally pour 10 or more at a time. Thinner castings get done first, thicker get done last. Sometimes they're different metals, sometimes I pour aluminum brass the same day. Assemble the two pieces of the mold. Dust cover. Very important. I always use a dust cover. Here we are out at the furnace. We're pouring. I believe there were 10 or 12 molds in this pour. Oh, there were 10 brass, 2 aluminum. The one we actually just rammed is one of the last two. That's a uh, A20 crucible, so we're at about 65 pounds of brass. This was a really good pour. I just kind of wish the wind had been blowing the opposite direction. And I always invert. Break out. This is only cooled about a 45 minutes, so it's still toasty. Sorry, we're a little bit out of frame. I'm a metal caster, not a videographer. Out the device. Take the saws off. Band saw is your best tool for this, but the blades are pricey compared to saws all blades. An abrasive cutoff wheel works good if you can get to your actual casting. So the more complicated ones is you can't get the circular wheel into them. This is an 80 grit flap disc on a five inch grinder. This is my favorite tool, it's a Metabo. This is an older Metabo, it's got the trigger in the middle so you can use it left to right handed. A lot of them have it on the side now. You notice that vice, I keep a piece of leather in the front face to protect. It's better than a soft jaw. Here we are with the wire wheel. This is where you clean up, get a good look at it. I have four different buffers, all with different wheels. 
The one you're seeing now is a flap disc. I really do buy cheap flap wheels just because they're available. Those are Harbor Freight. But the other side is a uh, 3M Scotch Bright. Those wheels are just awesome. The 3M Scotch Bright wheels. None of the knockoffs or even the Nortons work as well. These give you a satin finish, about 220. And that goes great into the buffer. This is a wonderful piece. This is the MS plaque. It's one of the early ones I did. Here's my newest buffer. It's a one horse. The wheel closest to you is a uh, greaseless compound, which I really like, though it is messy. It throws a lot of muck out, and you have to keep it um, stored uh, cool. Not cold, but cool. So I have to take it in every night. This is my Tripoli buffer. It's the finest, what I call finish. You can go lower, but for brass, it's not really necessary. You get a little bit more finish, but it's just not worth the time because they're going to they're gonna yellow over in like the first month. And very few people are hand polishing these to keep them up, so they're just going to turn what they turn. So there's no reason to kill yourself. In some applications, you'll want to go ahead and get another two more buffers and take this down at least to a green or even to a white. I've cut a lot out of this, out of the finishing. I probably spend 10, 15 minutes finishing a piece like this. I just wanted to let you all see the different buffers. Yeah, these three buffers are Masseuse. Probably pronouncing that wrong. They're discontinued, out of business. I'm glad I have them. I don't know how I ended up with three identical ones. I know there was a uh, Craigslist one and a Facebook Marketplace one. And I think one was given to me. Yeah, it had a small little pinhole, so I went back over to the wheel to knock it off and then rebuffed it. This is the real advantage to having so many buffers, is I don't ever have to change a wheel. I just step to a different machine. To get the buffing compound off, I clean it off with lacquer thinner. Big hint here, lacquer thinner. Buy five-gallon cans. It's so much cheaper. Go to the auto parts store. They, they have them. They have to order them sometimes, but they have them. You get a five-gallon can, and it's about a third of the price buying it by the gallon. I use this uh, pie pan. About 90% of the stuff I do will fit in this pie pan perfect, and that's just a parts cleaning brush. Clean all that out. The flatbacks are hard to get out. I'm probably looking for a tool. Just rub it off with a uh, rag. And I antique, <clears throat> I use the cheapest, oldest, old school method. This is how we did it on the prairie when I worked in the foundry there. That's uh, chocolate brown spray paint. And just use the lacquer thinner to clean off the high points and it fills in the lows. Most pieces I like the chocolate brown, but uh, sometimes I do use black. 
This technique also puts a thin protective layer. These plaques, I've got some of them been hanging on my ear, my wall for eight, nine years. You can't tell I didn't cast them yesterday. There's the mounted finished piece.